And this is a Q&A on Marino Radio blog. Let's find out what is Agnes Word's plan, the best practice. According to Solas Chapter 5 Regulation 27, nautical charts and nautical publications such as sailing directions, list of lights, notices to mariners, tide tables and all other nautical publications necessary for the intended voyage shall be adequate and up-to-date. The required charts and publications must therefore be available on board and updated as specified by the notices to mariners in accordance with the latest maritime safety information. Chart selection is a very important process on board of the vessel. Each part of the passage must be covered by small-scale charts for an overview and the larger-scale charts for detailed information. Depending on the company procedures and the master's orders, it is not only the charts relevant to the voyage that may be required. Charts for areas and ports which may become relevant in case of an emergency or deviation could also be required. Whilst navigating in sea areas that are often frequented by hurricanes or typhoons, it is advisable to have charts ready for alternative routes. This makes provision for taking avoiding action on instant chart information as early as possible without the necessity to order the chart permits first. However, if the company demands charts only relevant to the route, a list of charts required in case of emergency should be prepared to be able to order them immediately. The chart's availability in EGDIS may be checked with the use of integrated software inside the EGDIS, like Chart Assistant, or we may use a site software prepared for such kind of purposes. The Admiralty Digital Catalog is a free computer software program provided by the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office, designed for selecting and ordering admiralty charts and publications. With a few clicks, a rough draft route can be inserted from port to port. A chart selection can then be initiated by the route basket function. All charts related to the route will then be added to the virtual shopping basket. It is imperative that the automated selection should be reviewed to identify and delete unnecessary charts. Additional charts, including those for emergency shelters, routing charts, piracy charts and other critical areas can then be added manually to the basket. Basket contents must be reviewed again to ensure a full and complete chart coverage of the voyage. Furthermore, the items listed in the basket must be checked against the ship's chart inventory to ensure that charts already purchased are not bought again. In the end, a list of all charts relevant to the voyage should be added to the voyage handbook. Navigational charts and publication status should be up to date. In this license Licenses first need to be installed and then cells themselves need to be inputted afterwards. Subsequently, all navigational charts must be updated by the latest notices to mariners, which also include TNP notices and are amended according to the latest maritime safety information. At this stage of the planning process, the safety related information regarding hazards to navigation and other obstructions provided by Navtex and safety net must be checked. Important and relevant information has to be added to the relevant charts as user objects. This can be a permanent or temporary nature. Several EGDIS provide the function to add an expiry date to the object after which it will disappear automatically. As stated above, SOLAS also requires nautical publications such as sailing directions, list of lights, tide tables and all other nautical publications necessary for the intended voyage to be adequate and up-to-date. The voyage-specific editions need to be pre-positioned on the bridge for reference and a list of all publications involved with the voyage plan has to be completed and added to the voyage handbook. Incidents that occurred in the past provide evidence of the importance of the right counter and value settings. Wrong settings have resulted in several groundings. 
because critical shallow waters were not identified by watchkeeping personnel and no proper alert was either activated or triggered. It should be borne in mind that on paper chart the navigator had to filter and interpret all chart data accordingly whenever the chart was consulted. This process of filtering in EGDIS is taken by the safety settings, which results in presentation of chart data instantly reduced to the information needed according to the voyage stage and the ship's particulars. Of all the safety settings, the most attention should be paid to the safety contour. In EGDIS, anti-grounding alerts are based on crossing of safety contour. Also, the navigator should analyze the available water depth is sufficient in respect of the vessel's draft, including dynamics, adverse factors. These factors might increase the vessel's draft or decrease the available water depths. When the contour values have been been adjusted, the setup should be surveyed with regard to the resulting contour lines, because in EGDIS we have certain depth contours which are produced by hydrographer who compiled the chart. For the creation of the track, the whole passage can be divided into three sections. As you know, from the berth at the departure port to the pilot station, from the pilot station to the pilot station at the arrival port and from the pilot station to the arrival berth. This method make it easier to alter the particular section if necessary. Later on, the three fragments can be merged into one route. The navigator usually has two options to place waypoint on EGDIS. The first option is to enter the waypoints graphically using the cursor on the chart and picking the desired position. Alternatively, a text mode or route editor is available to enter the position by latitude and longitude. It is compulsory to perform the voyage planning on the primary means of navigation. If paper charts are still in use, it is advisable to round the positions of the points on the EGDIS to facilitate the transfer to paper charts. Each plan should be saved with an individual name, clearly identifying the voyage and the section. There is not an ultimate solution for this task, and the procedure can differ widely from ship to ship. A loaded voyage plan must be reviewed by a visual and automated route check before setting it to monitor. After creation of a track, we need to adjust the safety parameters for it. Here we want you to know that the parameter philosophy may be different from one producer to another. With some of these models, the waypoint parameters are effective for the leg from each particular waypoint onwards. However, other EGDIS models might use the input parameters towards the waypoint. In other words, from which point of the track the safety parameter is in force. That's the question which you have to bear in mind. Confusion is to be expected when there is a mixed to and from parameter philosophy established on the same EGDIS model. Each waypoint that requires the insertion of parameters, such as XCD, plant speed or turn radius, the available parameters can differ between manufacturers. If an EGDIS is part of integrated navigational system, the parameters are relevant not only for the in internal use of the EGDIS, but are also transmitted to the track and speed control units. The video about setting up of safety parameters and the recommended values is already available on our channel. We we'll slide the button for the next question already. But to help us, we need you to subscribe to the channel. And we hope your thumb is rising up for the like.